today I got the absolute sauce when it comes to doing these realistic scrapbooking look effects, all 100% digital. I've been seeing these effects pop up a lot more within the last few years and I don't really see them going anywhere with how creative people are getting and just people running with different ideas. I think it's a really good skill to have even if you're a music video editor and you don't really do anything with photos cover arts or whatever, I think it's a good thing to add on to your arsenal and kind of being able to charge clients more for album covers, photos and stuff addition with your music video. It's a good thing to tack on. And also you can level up your Instagram kind of doing it. If you're new here, what's good? My name is Brian. I make tutorials here on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I upload three times a week. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. It's free and I appreciate it if you could like and comment as well. It helps push my content to other people that want to see it. One last thing before we get into the video, if you want to snag the paper assets we're going to be using in this video or any other music video editing assets to help you save time, get a cool look, and also support the channel at the same time, I'll have my website linked down below. It's briandelmata.com. Check out my packs and presets. But yeah, that's enough talking. Let's get into Photoshop and break down this effect. Before we get into Photoshop, I just want to give a shout out to Ian Woods. A lot of the stuff in the tutorial concepts that we're going to be using are inspired by him. So definitely go show some love on his page. Check his stuff out. Really, really talented dude. I'm pretty sure all the stuff he does is actually with real paper. We're gonna be doing a digital version of some of these things using techniques and kind of creating our own ideas off just the concepts that he's been using. And then I just wanna show you a few examples of stuff that I created while practicing this effect and kind of using the concepts and playing around and experimenting with my own ideas. I think this one's really fire. Um, it's just Kanye here and I replaced, I just moved the circle over here and replaced his head with just like that red color. I think that looks pretty cool. This one's cool too, just, uh, around with that circle idea again. I really like how this one came out. I just replaced his face mask with the Donda album cover. So I thought that was pretty cool. I like how that looks. And then obviously added these paper textures and stuff to make it look more physical. This one's one of my favorites. Honestly, I, I really like how I cut out around his face and just use like the shape of his head as well as the rips of the paper. And then I saw these photos on Golden's Instagram a while back and I really wanted to do something with it ever since. I finally got the opportunity with this tutorial. So I did some stuff like this. I thought it looked really cool. Took some stuff from up in the sky, put it down here, all that stuff. This one's probably my favorite. It just has a lot of stuff going on and I played around with a lot more scrapbook stuff. I didn't even really completely finish it, but I just wanted to play around with some different ideas. So I'm gonna be showing you basically the general concepts of all these different things. And we're just gonna be making a piece on a freestyle. So first off, you're gonna want some kind of image. If you don't have any images or photos that you've taken yourself, you can go ahead and go on artist Instagram and download some photos. Always just be sure to credit the photographer if they credited them. I saw these photos on Golden's Instagram a while back. I was able to find the photographer, Alex McDonald. Shout out him. And I was able to get some more photos just from his Instagram. So if you do end up posting it, just be sure to credit the artist, photographer, all that stuff. And then if you're looking for some ways to download the photos and get them from the Instagram and download it onto your computer, I was just going Google and type in Instagram photo downloader. This is the first time that I've used inflac.com. But it works perfectly fine. You just copy the link from any image or whatever. Go up here, click copy link, and then just paste it in and download it. So to start off, I just want to go ahead and show you the concept of the circle. So all you need to do is go up to this marquee tool and go to the elliptical marquee tool. And if you hold down shift, click and drag, it will make a perfect circle. Obviously, you don't need it to be perfect circle, but if you do want it to be a perfect circle, hold shift. If not, you can go ahead and do whatever sizes by just clicking and dragging. But then once you go ahead and do that, you can just select, make the size you want and select any area you want. Uh, for right now, let's go ahead and do this wheel. I think it'd be cool to do something with the wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the layer of our photo real quick. And then if you want to duplicate this, you can click Control J. That's gonna duplicate your layer. Now you can click and drag this around. And obviously since I went out of the frame, it is going to be not a perfect circle because it cuts off there, but I think that's fine. There's a lot of different ways you can approach this. If you control click on the thumbnail of this wheel up here, go to your image layer and click delete. It's gonna actually go ahead and delete it from the background. So if you wanted to make it look like you almost punched the hole out of the image and then had it behind, I would recommend duplicating it, control clicking and then deleting it from here. You can see that this wheel layer is below the overall image layer. Now, if you drag and add some kind of drop shadow on, I always recommend doing that to kind of make it look like it's actually there. Depending on your clip, you're gonna have to zoom in and just kind of see what you're working with. But most of the time I add just a little bit of size. It's not really easy to see here with this one because it is a darker area. Bring the opacity up to 100. The distance I normally keep right around zero. You can go a little bit off if you want it to come from a certain angle. Same with the spread. I'd normally keep it around under 10 and the size as well, like under five-ish. 
most of the time I do add a little bit of noise to the shadow. You can see here, the more you bring it up, the more noisy it's going to be. But I just add, like adding a little bit in there so it kind of matches the image a little bit more. And I think something like that looks good. And you'll be able to see the depth and everything a lot easier when you actually go ahead and add some paper textures on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna be using basically everything from my Ultimate Texture Bundle V2. Like I said, you can go ahead and snag that on my website if you're interested. And let's go ahead and drag on one of the ones. I like some of the ones that have the hole already in the rip. There's a few that I did it on. So let's go ahead and use the black sheet 12. Drag that on. I'm gonna rotate vertical and then just scale it up. That looks good to me. I'm gonna drag the image above that layer, turn it to screen, and then right click on it and create clipping mask. And now you can see that it has that place missing out. You can kind of see that it looks like the paper is ripped here. That's really cool because it already adds that effect onto here. But now we can see that our wheel is missing and I actually don't want it to have the exact same paper texture on here as the wheel because then I kind of want to make it look like it's different pieces of paper. So to remove the black paper from being there, I'm going to control click on the thumbnail of the wheel and then go ahead and delete the paper layer. And if it says not editable, just go right click on the paper layer, go to rasterize and click delete. Now we can see that the overall image has a paper texture on it, but the wheel doesn't so far. And I'm starting to like how this is looking. And there's always some cool things that you can do with photo filters, adding grain, all that stuff. So I'm gonna be showing you some concepts of that. One of my favorite things to do is go to image. I'm gonna be selected on this wheel layer down here. So just focus on this. This is what's gonna be affected. Go to image adjustments and then go to photo filter. You can now add any kind of these filters here, or you could just go just to the color. I like doing that personally most of the time and then selecting any of the colors. And if you drag this up, make sure preview selected so you can see what you're doing at the time. You'll be able to change the color of image while also keeping the data. So it's not like shifting the color, it's just adding like a filter over. And let's go ahead and try to kind of match that background of the flames. So maybe like a yellowish orange. I think that looks good. And then I'm actually gonna click preserve luminosity here, then go ahead and click okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some kind of texture to that wheel so it doesn't look like it's all digital. I'm gonna go to the paper texture folder and find something that I like. Let's use the thir number 13 and I wanna use more of a clean area for it. I drag it above the wheel layer, right click and create clipping mask. I guess you don't even really have to do that for here since it's at the bottom. But I just do it to be safe anyways and then go ahead and turn it to screen. Now we can see if we move it around, we can find some spot that we like. I'm liking how that's looking. And if you want it to make it look a little bit more paperish and ripped, there's some things you can do. And then to give a little bit more paper texture around this, to give it a little separation, to let you know that these are two separate pieces of paper, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and I'm gonna make it in between the paper texture layer you're using and the overall image. And then I'm gonna go to the paintbrush and turn my color to white or gray, just like a, just to kind of match the vibe of this color right here. So anything paper texture that you're using, go ahead and kind of match the color. I'm gonna do a little bit lighter than it. So just like a light grayish white. And then I'm gonna be using this brush called Kyle's Drawing Box new pastel. It's from the Mega Adobe Mega Pack and it's free for all Adobe users. So I'll have that link down below. And if it's not in the description, just let me know and I will update it. And then you can see once you paint on outer layer of this, you can make it as big or as little as you want. It does give it that paper ripped look and you're able to tell that there's a little separation here now. I really like how this looks and I think it is a game changer when you're adding this paper rip look to digital photos. You can always change the size of it, the brush. I always stick around five. If you go a little bit lower, you can see that it adds a little bit of scratches, which is cool. You know what you're looking for. And then one thing that stuck out to me is these shapes on his jacket, the hearts and the flowers. I'm gonna use the pen tool and I'm going to go ahead and mask out the heart and kind of duplicate it to give it a little scrapbook look. I think that'd be cool. Obviously, obviously depending on your footage or whatever, it's gonna be different everyone but you can do these same concepts with all your different footage and then right click make selection i'm going to go ahead and duplicate it from the image layer now we can see we have this art and it is on screen so i'm going to turn the, the blending mode to normal and i go ahead and duplicate it like two or three times here just to give it a little look of it's kind of falling down and then i'm going to go through and do that flippy mask layer with the paintbrush for all of these roughened up edge you can see i'm just painting around just how i was before I'm going to do that to every single layer. I guess you could do it before and copy exactly, but I don't want it to have the same rips. 
that I don't want it to look copied and pasted. It does take a little bit more time doing it this way, but I think it's worth it. And it always does help going and naming all your layers. You could be doing that as you're going. It is kind of a game changer, honestly, being able to see what you're doing. Obviously, I'm not doing it right now, but it does help. And then I'm going to add a paper texture to all of these different layers. And you can do the same one or a bunch of different ones throughout. I'm going to do a bunch of different because I always think it looks the best. Then go ahead and turn it to screen. You can even match up these white spots in the paper textures. Kind of give it a little bit more of a rip. I'm actually just going to duplicate that layer and just use different parts of it. Duplicate it, drag it above that heart layer. Then I do want to play with the drop shadow on some of these layers just to make it a little bit more unique. And then if you like the way one looks, you can go ahead and go to right click on the layer, go to copy layer style and paste it onto each of the layers that you want it to take place on. And then I just went ahead and masked around golden and the wings here. I'm gonna right click, go make selection and click control J. I'm gonna turn off the screen layer, play around with the drop shadow so it doesn't look kind of digital how it does right now. I'm gonna bring the distance to zero, spread to zero, and then the size just up a little bit. That way it kind of gives it a little bit of depth and I'm going to go ahead and do that exact same thing with the paintbrush of that layer with a clipping mask and give it some of that ripped look. Again, just going through and painting out this area. And the areas that I kind of missed and are more blue here, I'm just going in and painting in a little bit deeper than I would, just so it looks a little bit more ripped. I think it just looks better. And you can even go in and paint in areas where you want it to be ripped to. I'm gonna bring the brush size down just a little bit, and maybe just do a few areas around here. And now we need some kind of paper texture for that layer. So it looks not out of place. And let's find something, we'll drag 28 on here, and make sure it is above that layer. Go ahead and turn it to screen. Right click and create clipping mask as well. Now you can go and play around with the position of it too. And you don't always have to use screen either. You can play with different blending modes and get different looks. I think exclusion looks pretty cool here. It's all really dependent on how realistic you want it to look or just how unique. I think I'm gonna go with exclusion. It might not look the most like realistic looking, but I think it looks cool and kind of fits the vibe of the image. Then let's do one last one of these circles here. I'm gonna do like the front of the bike, put control J on the overall image layer, turn that layer off screen because it was already on screen. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the top. Let's move it up here, but actually below the wing layer. And this is why I recommend naming it. Going a little quick because of the tutorial, I don't know exactly where the wing layer is. Oh, here it is. I'm drag it below the wing layer here, and then also add a paper texture onto that. And then one last time, I'm gonna go ahead and do that paint thing just to kind of roughen up the edges a bit. And then for the sake of the tutorial, let's finish up and kind of wrap up our image. You can do more, you can do less. Obviously, get as creative as you want with it. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is highlight all the clips, click Control J, and then go ahead and click Merge Layers. So that way the top layer is its overall image. And then I'm just gonna turn off all these layers here so we know we're just working on this one layer. And you can do some things like add a filter to it, add some noise. I always recommend before doing that actually converting it to a smart object. That way if you don't like how it looks in a little bit, you can go back and change it. And let's zoom in before we add the noise just so we can kind of see what we're working with. I think these things that I'm adding right here are just gonna help you blend image together just a little bit better. Let's do non-monochromatic so there's color in the noise and let's do Gaussian just a little bit of it. And then I'm also going to go ahead and go to photo filter. And let's add just a slight photo filter onto it. I always like bringing it up to 100 just to kind of see what color I wanna work with. Easier for me to like tell which colors I like best with the image. And I think I'm gonna go with something like a yellowish, orangish, red. I think right there looks really good actually. Let's go and bump this down a lot. Preserve the luminosity. And if you toggle between preview and not, you can see what you're kind of doing. Go ahead and make it even a little bit less. It's just, I want a little bit of a touch on it. Click okay. And then you can add anything to this image. Let's go ahead and go to image adjustments and go to curves on this layer as well. And you can play a little bit of the grading, make it pop a little bit more. I'm gonna wash out the blacks a little bit. Honestly, this photo is a really good photo and it doesn't need much touching up. I'm just kind of doing it to merge all of our layers that we added and stuff on to make it look a little bit better. If you turn off the smart filters on and off, you can see kind of what that's doing. It's nothing like super, super noticeable, but I think it does help the overall look. And then I just realized that we have this layer here that has the transparent. You can go ahead and put anything behind it. You can leave it transparent and it's just gonna show up white if you post it. Let's go ahead and just make a layer with the layer of the sky. Real quick, just 
bring it below it, and then go to the paint bucket and paste that. I need to add a drop shadow onto that layer, so I'm just gonna paste, and then I'm also gonna add some noise to that layer just so it matches. I use the same amount of noise. There we are. Looks pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this tutorial. If you made it all the way to the end, like always, I do appreciate you. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead and do all that YouTube stuff. Follow me on all social medias. I'll have them linked down below. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on some of these different concepts and stuff, let me know in the comments. If you wanted to support the channel, grab any paper tigers or any of my video editing assets, I'll have my website linked down below. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Peace.